Intro music and hi there. Welcome to the Sexperts. I'm your host, Dr. John T. Alanis, SCPM. And I'm Delilah Hader, Vice President of FADC. Wait, what is that, real quick? Fathers Against Diet Coke. <laughs> yep, FADC, not high C. And welcome to the Sexperts. We are the Sexperts. That's me, Dr. John, Delilah, and that's it. We're the two sexperts. We're the real sexperts at gmail.com. It takes two sexperts to make a podcast go right. <laughs> Why don't you, can you sing it a little bit? It takes two. Po- no, you can't sing that. <laughs> You're all in for a second. No, you can't sing it. It takes two sexperts to make a thing go podcast. <laughs> It was awful. But anyways, um, we're the experts. If you're just tuning in, um, I mean, we just started the episode, um, but we haven't started the podcast. A lot of people stop me on the street and they say, what is this expert? Yeah. And what I, say, your- I say, fucking think about it for a second, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, somebody who has expertise in sex. It's pretty obvious. See, you're losing listeners. I gain them. If they ask me, I have my elevator pitch. They ask me, he's like, oh, what is this expert? I'm like, well, uh, you have to go to 25 years of med school, specifically with certified professional midwifery. That's me. And then you have to graduate to become a senior certified professional midwife. And then maybe, just maybe, if you're lucky enough, you can find somebody with beautiful, sparkling blue eyes like Delilah here. What, what you just told was a story of sexpert privilege. <laughs> I didn't have that silver <laughs> dick in my mouth. <laughs> I became Which is a our sex- topic of the day. I became a sexpert, like backpacking through Europe, penniless, poor, and mm-hmm. smelling but still finding my way night after night after night after night. I think one day we have to talk about that because I'm not sure how you got here. Anyways, um, silver dick in our mouth is not the topic of the day. I was just kidding. Um, but uh, let's introduce, we have a, a new topic of the week every day, uh, every week, every month, and uh, from a new location. Oh, by the way, uh, we're actually right now uh, in uh, Chipotle. We're in Chipotle uh, in Greenbrier Mall, and we're just having fun. We're having fun eating burritos and, and shit. Uh, let's talk about our... Um, I didn't think you could eat two, and you did. <laughs> well, they were mini burritos. They were the kids, uh, the fun size. Um, let's talk about our topic of the day. Let's introduce that. And sorry, I, I'm a little uh, under the weather, so my voice sounds awful. Well, take two of these burritos and call me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> take one anally. Um, our topic of the day, because Thanksgiving is coming up, is cock gobbler. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> talk. Oh, talk. Uh, I got. He's fine. Neck he's fine. Everybody. He's I got not. A neck cramp. He's fine. Everybody. He's not choking. He's <laughs> cock gobbling on purpose. Oh God. Yeah. When I drink too much, ah, my jaw gets like a uh, cramp. You keep this up. They're not going to keep selling uh, kid sized burritos to adults. <laughs> oh God. You right. could ruin it for everybody. You're going off the rails. Um, let's get to our, uh, he, he's walking up now with his burrito on his, his plate. Welcome. Hello, guest. Hey, guys. Hey. How are you doing? Good. Right. Why don't you introduce yourself to our audience out there? Oh, I uh, certainly don't mind if I do. Uh, my name is Chase Clifton, and I am a demotivational speaker. <laughs> yeah, Chase, um, I, I walked by, um, I think you were doing something here in Greenbrier Mall about a month ago, some of your demotivational speaking, and I just... I was floored by how demotivated I was. Like you were like really... literally floored on the ground <laughs> crying. <laughs> I couldn't pick myself up. I was like a sponge. Um, talk about your, your your mindset and what what you do out there. Oh yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. You know, I think the biggest thing for me is about minimizing maximum potential. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's that's the motto that I go by. You're, uh, you're min maxing. Yes, but was... not in the way you think. You read my third book. <laughs> yeah, I, I picked it up. I skimmed it. Mm. I tried. I couldn't get through it. <laughs> See? And he read the fourth one. So. <laughs> yeah, um, and pick up that, that copy of the, uh, the fourth book. It's, it's called I Tried, But I Couldn't Get Through It mm. um, by Chase, Chase Clifton. Yes. I, I get the right. Um, I, I get you confused with Tony Clifton for some reason. Um, so uh, let me ask you something. You put this in your book. You have a horse ranch out in Colorado. That's right. So how does that help with your demotivating? I, I, I don't, I kind of don't get it. 
Yeah, uh, see, and that's a that's a very good question. A lot of people ask me about the horse ranch, uh, and the biggest thing about horses, yeah, is uh, that they're so majestic that to look at one compared to yourself is so humbling. It just <laughs> takes all the motivation away from you. I I never hated myself more than when I dated this one woman with a horse face. <laughs> <laughs> she just reminded me of my my imperfections. Uh, oh, usually a horse face is not a good thing. It was really bad. Was her name Wendy? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also read to, I kind of get it. Um, so people can ride the horses, but you, you, bre- you breed specific kinds of horses that will not let people on them. Like they try to get up on them and then just kind of shuck them off. They're like, mm, yes. which demotivates them right. uh, even further. God. Yes. I've actually uh, trained some of the horses to switch from nay to just loser outright. <laughs> uh, it really helps. It helps a lot. Their slogan is you can't even lead a horse to water. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a, uh, you have a clip uh, of your ranch. Kind of, it's like a kind of a retreat out in Colorado that you can sign up for. And here's a little clip uh, of the horses, uh, saying loser and stuff. Here, let me play this. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, you're a loser, <laughs> baby. Oh. Why don't you kill yourself? All right, we'll press pause on that. Wow, you taught some of the horses to really talk pretty well. Yeah, uh, you know, that uh, that horse, that's actually uh, Chestnut. He is one of our all-stars. Uh, he really has demotivation down to a science. Play that second clip, I think. Right here, play. You're down to one turntable and no idea what you did with your microphone. I'm going to pause that. Are you a fan of Beck? It sounds like the artist Beck, two turntables and microphone. I don't. Know. That's that's a weird thing. You're training you're training horses to talk shit using parodies of Beck lyrics. Yes, mm. uh, as Beck is the most inspirational artist. Yeah. So to flip it with the horses really brings everyone. Down. Wow, that's really great. And I, I really like in that first clip. If you remember, he starts to say, "I am a horse." <laughs> But then he stopped because it's like, oh no, I shouldn't say that. That's inferred by you, people looking at me. This is a podcast. This is a podcast. So you can see the video, but if you could see the <laughs> people at home can see the video, you'd see the point where he realizes his eyes say, "I shouldn't be stating the obvious." <laughs> you probably had to train that out of him. It's like, don't say I'm a horse. Don't say I'm on a ranch. Don't say I'm in Colorado. People know but that. That's yeah. the first thing when a when an animal becomes self aware, they say what they are. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's what I did when I was a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of babies, um, ooh, not a good transition. Let's talk about cock gobbler. <laughs> 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 Before we get to that, yeah. while you, uh, no, everybody, he's okay. That's just another purposeful uh, I, I gobbler. Get another cramp. I get another cramp. Um, what's some of the more demotivational foods I could eat? Because I'm really fat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, that's actually covered in, uh, in, in my most recent, most upcoming book. Mm-hmm. It's called Save Some for the Rest of Us. <laughs> uh, and it's really just, it's an outline of just a demotivational diet. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of Mountain Dew Code Reds, <laughs> almost exclusively Mountain Dew Code Reds. You can see Mountain Dew Code Red in conjunction with a normal diet, uh, is too much, but just Mountain Dew Code Red? You don't have the energy for anything. Damn. It's, there's no nutritional value in a Mountain Dew Code Red. I feel like they should be paying us for, for that plug. <laughs> See, Mountain Dew Code Red, which also comes in Arctic Blast and uh, regular. It's still considered a Code Red in Arctic Blast form? Yes. It's a colon. It's Mountain Dew Code Red colon Arctic Blast. <laughs> a colon Arctic Blast. It sounds like an Eskimo diarrhea. <laughs> I like that joke. Just because you're eating off the kid's menu doesn't mean you have to make kids jokes. <laughs> All right, let's let's get back on track. Um, mm. what, what's in your future? What are you working on right now, as far as demotivating? Mm, yeah, uh, or what are you not working on? Yeah, uh, do you demotivate yourself, or you demotivate others specifically? Well, see, that's a good question as well. Um, see, kind of what I found um, is that I'm not 
successful. <laughs> and I feel like the reason that that is, is because so many other people are successful and there's not enough success for the rest of us. So my uh, goal is really just to get people to pull back. Yeah. Just take a second, you know, let some of us catch up mm-hmm. and, and then we can all shine in the sun together. <laughs> Now that is almost a little motivating. Talking about shining in the su- in the sh- in the sun, shining in the sun together. Um, do, that- you f- do you find that you're up against difficult converse- competition when various states in the country legalize weed? <laughs> Wait, why? Your services aren't needed anymore because everybody demotivates <laughs> through <laughs> through weed. Yeah, my Colorado market is almost <laughs> non-existent now. Uh, it was a big blow. Uh, um, they were my most fervent supporters at the po- <laughs> at the beginning but yeah it is what it is i suppose you gonna move the ranch what are the other biggest threats to the demotivational industry yeah. besides weed it's, uh it's it's weed uh and and also um <laughs> have you ever seen lifetime <laughs> the movie the network? channel yes the channel yeah too motivational like oh. it just, it's too motivational mm-hmm. it, it just all the movies are about people getting their lives together and moving on after tragedy. And it's like, no, tragedy hits, linger. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on a bumper sticker. You know, I, that's kind of like um, the movie Titanic. You mm-hmm. know, at the end, it's it's quite a bummer, you know? Um, Did you know that song, Do You Have to Let It Linger, was about the um, Titanic? No shit. Wow. Do you but, have to? Do, do you, you have, have to? to? You have to let it linger. Hmm. She killed herself. Um Anyways, <laughs> let's get to, I'm sorry, uh, I'm thinking of, uh, what was her name, Swearcy Rorden? Anyways, she was a, well, top of the day, cock gobbler. I feel like you're turning this into a Z morning zoo. <laughs> yeah, I should record. Just we need a, like an offended woman uh, news reporter. You are so sexist. I can't believe you. Men don't get offended. <laughs> Everyone knows this. Um, what about do, your? What are the differences in demotivation, demotivating women versus men? Yeah, or do we we all the same? I had the same. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I had the same question. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> I would like the record to show. I too had that question. <laughs> uh, it's actually it's it's very interesting. Uh, I have found that I've never been able to demotivate a woman, not once. Wow, not one woman ever. I have girl power sexually. <laughs> Wait, explain that. When I meet them, they mm-hmm. have a lot of sexual motivation. Yeah. After several weeks of dating, <laughs> they seem to lose it. <laughs> Do you work a lot with the the dating scene? Kind of like with- I you say with the dead. <laughs> Are they the ultimate? Do you-, <laughs> <laughs> you work a lot in the morgue. <laughs> Now, do you do you do a lot like a lot of dating demotivating? Yeah. Dating demotivating? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Almost constantly. I do yeah. at least uh, <laughs> one speed constantly. dating round a week. <laughs> um, where it's just uh, I kind of I, I set two people up, um, mm-hmm. and if I see <laughs> any spark of motivation mm-hmm. in between them, I just step in and I'll I'll drop like a, a heavy fact on them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I heard you coming out with your own dating app. Yes. Where instead of finding the best match, it's mm-hmm. like the worst. Yes. Yeah. It, it's called, uh, well, we actually had a, a bit of a dispute. Uh, Tinder wasn't <laughs> happy about it, um, but it's called Blender. Uh, <laughs> it's just putting all your options in a blender and destroying them. Oh, uh, my God. Now, what do you mean drop something heavy, uh, like personally about them or just like existential dread sort of thing? Well, really, uh, we use their Blender profile to kind of figure out <laughs> what they like and dislike. And there's also uh, a section on greatest fears. Oh. Uh, so I'll usually I'll walk in and drop a greatest fear on them. So if I see like two people you know, having fun, they're like yeah. talking, doing a good thing. And I'll, I'll walk in and I'll be like, you know, Janice, Todd over here doesn't want you to know. That uh, he's been unemployed for the past <laughs> eighteen years. Jesus! Oh, Todd, get yeah. get it up, man. Yeah, Todd Flinderson is not <laughs> doing well. He probably doesn't want me to use his full name, but <laughs> Todd, this is free demotivation for you. Now everyone knows Todd Flinderson has not worked in eighteen years. I'm sure he's only twenty two. So it's uh, <laughs> uh, that's our demographic. Unemployed twenty two. He's listening <laughs> right now. Say hi to your mom, Todd. Because <laughs> I fucked her. I know she's right there with you. Um. 
Well, let's let's try it out. I mean, I know we're gonna cheat this a little bit, so uh, it's me, Doctor John, and Delia. We're, we're obviously two overachievers. We have our own podcast. Right. We've studied sex. I think we're too similar. We probably would never go on a date to begin oh, with. Oh, this is a dating one. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. we're gonna use blenders. Blenders. My God, how many episodes have you tried to find a way to date me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this one will stick. I don't know. All right, so, so that's a that's a good uh, topic for next week. We'll go on a little date, and then you can blender us. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, hi there. My name is Doctor John. Uh, hi, I'm Delilah Hedaris, expert. Hey, you got beautiful blue eyes. They sparkle like the sun. Um, you're in my space. Hey, I don't want to interrupt you yeah, guys. Yeah. This looks like it's going pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, cataracts, uh, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Are, they, are your eyes sparkling because you have cataracts? How this, old are you? Is this, is this pre Am I pre-cataractic? Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I didn't want to bring it up until just now. Am I uh, going to be sentenced one? to a lifelong... Prescription for medical marijuana, where that's the only thing keeping my sight. <laughs> Listen, I oh. can I can take care of you. I can take care of you, Delilah. It's okay. I'm gonna look past the cataracts. Are let's, you rich? Let's keep this. Are you date rich? Going. Let's keep. This you date have your going. own podcast. Are you rich? I, uh, I'm pretty rich. Yeah, I got. Bank I saw accounts. you ordering off the kids' menu. Does that mean because you can afford a me- an adult meal? Uh, no, I have bank accounts and stuff. My, I do have a wife. That's not gonna get in the way. She's in. She's in an iron lung. So that's... I'm allergic to iron. Oh. I, I just it. demotivated myself. I was, I was going to say that. I might use that in a scenario <laughs> from the Iron Lung Wife. Uh, I, I couldn't really, even listen to Iron Maiden as a kid. I really like that. That app really works because I had no idea that he had cataracts and then you mm. dropped it. And then I was like, well, hands off. Yeah. It's really <sighs> just about making it as awkward and uncomfortable as possible. Mm. Is my cataracts contagious? Yes. Is it sexually transmitted cataracts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like eye worms. Mm. Um, so just flop out of there. What? What? What demotivates you personally? Uh, personally? What's keeping you from doing that 11th book? <laughs> oh, boy. Book Which 11. Is, it's kind of ironic. For a demotivational guy, you've accomplished a lot. <laughs> well, I see, the thing is, um, I really try to cram as much demotivation into the first four pages, because from page five on... No, uh, no one's ever read that far? No, it, it's good, because they're all blank. <laughs> uh, I can only get through about five pages a book. Uh, so realistically... Probably shouldn't be saying that, but uh, I probably have a, a, about half a book now. Uh, so once I get this next five pages down, uh, and I, I settle on a paperweight for the rest of the blank pages, I think that eleventh book is going to come together. I don't know, but you know, I'm the kind of guy who's like motivated by anything. You know, I see a blank page, I take it as you know, like a dare to like write your own story. You could do that, I, you know, I. You could do that. Uh, I mean, what, what do you what do you mean? What? Let's talk about how some of the things of the world motivate you. When you see a little bird, how does that motivate you? Uh, I see, uh, you know, it's wings that I can clip and I can take it and cage it and make it my pet. Okay. When you see um, a wave break mm-hmm. at the beach, how does that motivate you? Uh, it reminds me of the broken hearts that I can, you know, I can grab the heart and then break it, you know. I can Motivate fall in love and then hearts. break it. Yeah, yeah. This is beautiful imagery. I just, I, I gotta say, guys, mm-hmm. this is fantastic. Yeah, very demotivational. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of breaking hearts, I do want to get to our topic of the day. What we got to talk about is demotivational posters. Oh yeah. Oh, I love those because you know you think of um, you know, inspirational posters where it's like a, a mountain and it's like courage. You know, it just has the word courage. You have your own line of demotivational posters, yes. which I've seen in weird places like my dentist office. Mm. Um, yeah, the one is the mountain and it just says, caution, rocks falling. <laughs> yeah. what, uh, what are your favorites? What are your hits? Oh, uh, I think uh, my favorite, the one that I have uh, actually by my bedside, um, <laughs> it's just a headstone and it says, well, dot, dot, dot. Um, and I, it just really speaks to me. <laughs> On a personal level. It just says, well, Mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. That is, that is bleak. That is looking into the oblivion and the oblivion looking back at you. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh. Looking into the oblivion and saying, good (laughs) night. Good night. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so that's one you keep by your bedside? Yes. That, that's one that I keep by my bedside. Uh, I also have one that I keep, uh, kind of in the, it's like in the rear view mirror of my car. Uh, so every time I'm, I'm backing up, which is the direction that you want to go in when you're demotivated, you want to go backwards. Uh, every time I'm backing up, I look at it. Uh, and that one is actually, uh, that's a picture of it's, uh, it's two birds, uh, and they're in a tree. 
and the one bird is looking at the other bird, uh, and it says, "Don't try." <laughs> that's just all it says. It's, it's very. It's that's wow. our cutest demotivational poster. Uh, it is rated five stars on the site right now. Wow. I was thinking uh, t- there's two birds on a, on a tree limb, and one says the other way. Hey, is that one stone? <laughs> That was actually a prototype. <laughs> I don't know how that got leaked. That's almost like a far side. Cartier was like, "I do you, do you see one stone coming at us? I don't know. I love the far side. It's coming back. And I heard about that. Um, They're so, very motivated. I, they don't <laughs> partake of any of my uh It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Um, let's see, uh, speaking of bullshit, all bullshit. Let's get to our top of the day, which is cock gobbler. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, oh God, but I'm looking at, at the time. Uh, this Chipotle is actually closing down because this is salmonella poisoning. <sighs> this bean sprouts. Are you um, just ending this because I won't date you? N- not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons. Um, I'm so sorry. We, we got to cut it short. We didn't get to our top of the day, which is Cock Gobbler. Um, I will, uh, I will plug your book. I will just say, read, if you are, if you have too much going on right now, read his books. You will get demotivated in a heartbeat like that. Um, what else do you want to plug? Anything, anything else going on in your life? Uh, oh yeah. I, uh, I've actually, uh, I just started a, a music career. No uh, way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all the, uh, I actually, I have a, a brother. He lives with me. <laughs> Um, and I've been demotivating him for years. Oh my God. Uh, so stay at home brother. Yes. I stay at home brother. <laughs> um, and it's really, it's just a, a, like an ASMR experience of his life. Oh wow. Um, so when you feel too motivated, you just put your headphones in and you listen to that and it kind of, it brings you back. Sounds down. like the worst thing ever. <laughs> what are some examples? Is it like scratching his ass? Like what? what are yeah. You? <laughs> There's, uh, 16 tracks of ass scratches. <laughs> um, for any mood that you might be in. Uh, there's also uh, Late Night Microwave Hum, um, which is, it's uh, it's got like almost two hits right now. Uh, I think someone's <laughs> listening to it at the moment. I like that clip where he just says, hey, can I borrow some money? <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I borrow some money? Hey, can I borrow some money? Yeah. That's, oh, you, know, you got the Late Night. Can I borrow some money? Yeah. Money, 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 money. A lot of Late Night tracks for, for my brother. He just, he comes in my room a lot and he's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your car's on fire, I didn't tell you. And uh, it's great. All right, okay, we're leaving. Okay, we know it's a biohazard. Okay, whatever. I'm going to take my, my fun size burritos, though. All right, Um. well. If you don't want us recording in the play area, maybe it shouldn't be so soundproof. Yeah, and why do you have a play area? You're Chipotle. Jesus Christ. Anyways, thank you so much once once again. Why uh, do you call it Chipotle? play? <laughs> Okay, I can't can't do that one. Um, all right, so uh, we are the Sexperts. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Dr. Dr. John T. Alanese, SCPM. And I'm Delilah Haydair, um, proud advocate for Coke Zero, working hard, tirelessly to legislate against the evils of Diet Coke. See you sex time. Oh, are you expecting like a demotivational thing? Or I don't... <laughs> That's not free. <laughs> Not have to do it simply true, we're the sex first. That's our show. If you like what you heard and you think it was worth a dollar, join the official Sexperts fan club at patreon.com backslash sexperts podcast. A special thanks to the Push Comedy Theater and all of our supporters. Bye-bye.